The Salvation Army is open! Guys, everything in there was half off. So I bought this like massive bag of things and now I have so many things to upcycle. I'm super excited. But also, if you guys have to go out, don't be an asshole, just wear a mask. <laughs> My name is Tiffany and welcome back to Upcycle by Tito where I take old forgotten items and give them a new life. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I turned this very orange dress into this blush pink two-piece set. If you guys enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and share it with your friends. This transformation did take me multiple stages, but if you guys wanna see how I upcycled this dress, keep watching. You'll need a sewing machine, overlocker, iron and ironing board, thrifted dress, lining fabric, fabric shears, sewing pins, needle and thread, elastic thread, buttons, measuring tape, fabric marker, seam ripper, a ruler, a pot, rubber gloves, avocado skins and pits, bleach, soy milk, and a bucket. Here is the game plan. From the top of the dress, I'm going to be creating a crop top with a deep V. With fabric from the sides, I'm going to create a band that goes to the bottom of the top. From the bottom of the dress, I'm going to be making a skirt and I'm going to shift the center buttons over to the side. With the leftover fabric from the side, I'm going to be creating a waistband. With whatever fabric I have left over, I'm going to create a dress for a daisy. Let's take a look at the original dress. This dress features the oh-so-trendy shoulder pads and it has this embroidery in the front. It has a button-down front and is very, very orange. This dress isn't too big on me, but I still have a decent amount of fabric to play with. So I have the dress here and I bought so many things from the thrift store that to be completely honest, I don't remember why I was so drawn to this dress. Like, I can't even tell you a single thing that I like about this dress right now, but I can tell you something I don't like about it, and that is this color. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attempt to get, like to bleach this color out, and I have a bucket of water here, and I've got some bleach, so I'm gonna let it soak and hope that the color comes off. I don't know. Make sure that you are outside or in a well-ventilated place and make sure that you have some gloves. The first thing I'm gonna do is to soak the entire dress in just the water because I wanna get it completely wet so that it hopefully bleaches evenly. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now I'm gonna pour in the bleach. Honestly, I don't know how much I'm gonna pour. I'm just gonna wing it. Um, and you can also do this in your bathtub, but I don't know how long this dress has to soak, so that's why I'm doing it in the bucket. Um, okay. Now I'm just gonna mix it up so that it hopefully bleaches evenly. So it's been about four hours since I've bleached the dress and we're just gonna check and see how she's doing. She's still orange. I have good news, only the lining stayed orange. The rest of the dress actually faded really, really well. Like that's, I'm really happy. Now I'm going to rinse out all the bleach and then wash and dry the dress and then we can start taking it apart. So it's actually been about a month since I bleached this dress but I was feeling super uninspired and I kept flip-flopping on what I wanted to do with it. But I think I'm finally ready to conquer this upcycle, so I wanted to show you guys what the dress looks like post bleach. As you can see here, the color lifted significantly. It's this kind of really pale, peachy color now, which I don't hate. Um, the thing that surprised me the most though is this embroidered part. So a lot of times the thread that's used is made out of a synthetic material and you can't bleach the color out of that. Um, I don't know if you can see this here, but See how this thread is still orange? I was really nervous that the embroidered part would still be orange, but the color lifted, so I'm super pleased about that. Unfortunately for me, the bleach didn't lift any color from the lining, so it is still super orange and is very reminiscent of a certain commander-in-chief, so I will not be using this lining in this project. 
So I'm gonna be using this piece of white fabric that I have for our lining. Um, I wish I could tell you what it is, but I don't know. It is light to medium weight, and it has this really, really lovely drape, but it still has a decent amount of structure to it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to seam rip this top part from the skirt. I just finished seam ripping, and here I have the skirt piece, and this is the top. This guy, bye! And I also had to seam rip the sleeves off because they were attached to the lining. So to get rid of the lining, I did have to seam rip the sleeves. But now I'm going to start with the skirt because I'm still not really sure what I'm going to do with the top yet. Here is the front part of the skirt laid out. My plan is to shift the buttons to the left side to create an asymmetrical look. I'm starting with this side of the skirt which will end up being the larger panel. From the hem, I'm measuring and marking at 26 and a half inches. Draw a line to connect those marks. Now cut along that line. Now I'm going to draft a dart that will create a small curve at the top of the skirt. To draft my dart, I measure 4 inches from the side and make a mark. From there, I measure half an inch and make another mark. On this mark, I draw a perpendicular line that measures 4 and a half inches. From this line, I measure half an inch and make one more mark. Now I'm going to join this mark and the line with a diagonal line. Fold and sew along the diagonal line to create the dart. I've sewn on the dart and now I'm reattaching the front pieces of my skirt. Based on my measurements, I'm identifying the center and marking at 7.5 inches. Now I'm folding the skirt in half and pinning it in place. Now cut and you should have something that looks like this. Moving on to the back of the skirt. Again, I am measuring and marking 26 and a half inches from the hem and then drawing a line to connect those marks. Using a skirt that I know fits me well, I place it on my fabric and copy the shape of the side seam. Then, I replicate the placement and size of the dart onto my fabric. I mark 4 inches from that dart to identify the center. Now, I cut out the shape of my new side seam. Then, I cut along the waist just past that center point. Using that center pin as a guide, I fold my piece in half and pin to secure. Cut and you should have a symmetrical piece. Draft your dart for the other side and then sew. I just finished sewing the darts on the back of the skirt and this is what it looks like. Now before I put the skirt together, I'm actually going to go ahead and cut out the lining fabric first. I'm going to start with the lining for the front of the skirt, so I've gone ahead and unbuttoned it and we are going to start on the side with the buttons. So this is what the fabric looks like on the right side and this is the wrong side and it has the buttonhole placard. So we're going to want to attach the lining to this buttonhole placard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the selvage edge of my lining because I know that that's a straight line and I'm going to go ahead and pin it onto this buttonhole placard. I'm gonna take the placard, I'm gonna open it up like this, and I'm going to lay the fabric like this, and I'm gonna pin along this entire edge, sandwiching the buttons. I've pinned the lining piece on, and it should look like this with the buttons in the inside. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and sew along where I just pinned. So that's the seam that we just sewed, and if you flip it over, we should have something that looks like this. So this will be the outside, and on the inside, it should look like this. Now let's go ahead and cut this lining. As you can see here, this is the seam that joins both fabrics together. I smooth both layers out and pin to secure. Then I cut out the lining. Remove the pins, and when you flip it over, it should look like this. I draw a line one inch from the hem and cut so that my lining is a little bit shorter. Now we're going to repeat all of the same steps for the larger panel of the front piece, making sure that you add your dart on the lining piece. Repeat for the back part of the skirt. I really should have done this before I sewed the darts together so that I wouldn't have to redraft the darts for the lining, but oh well. Now that I have all my pieces, I'm ready to start putting the skirt together. So I'm going to pin the front pieces to the back piece along the side seam and sew, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the lining piece. I've just finished sewing the skirt together at the side seams, and this is what it looks like now. I also sewed the lining together, so this is the inside. It is so neat, I'm so happy about it. Now all we have left to do for the skirt is make the waistband.
To make my waistband, I first find the measurement of the waist of just the back part of the skirt. Mine measures 13 and a half inches. I draw a straight line with my ruler on my fabric and then mark at 13 and a half inches. I'm identifying the center and making a mark at six and three quarters of an inch and then drawing a perpendicular line. Then, from the first line I drew, I'm drawing another line two inches above it. From the center line, I'm measuring and marking at six and a half inches on both sides. Then, I draw a diagonal line connecting these points. Now, I'm just double checking to make sure the back of my waistband matches the back of my skirt. Cut, making sure to leave a seam allowance for just the two sides. Then, cut out another identical piece. Moving on to the smaller panel of the front piece, mine measures five and three quarters of an inch. I'm basically repeating the same steps except for one end of this part of the waistband will have a 90 degree angle and the other will have a diagonal line. I'm measuring and marking to five and three quarters of an inch on this bottom line and I'm measuring and marking to five and a half inches on this top line. Then I join these two points to create that diagonal line. Cut, again making sure to leave seam allowance for just the sides. Cut out your second piece, making sure that this time it is a mirrored piece and not an identical one. For the larger panel of the front of the skirt, we are going to follow these exact same steps with the longer part of the waistband measuring nine and a half inches and the shorter part measuring nine and a quarter of an inch. With all your pieces cut out, you should have two sets that look like this. I'm going to be attaching interfacing to just these three pieces. Now, place your pieces right sides facing and sew them together at the side seams. You should now have two pieces that look like this. Lay them on top of each other right sides facing and sew along the top part of the waistband. With those two pieces sewn together, I'm now ready to attach this to my skirt. I pin the waistband to my skirt, making sure that I line them up at the side seams. Pin to secure and then sew. With my waistband sewn onto my skirt, I'm going to fold my waistband so that they are right sides facing. Now I'm going to pin the edge and secure with a stitch. Do the same on the other side. So I've sewn this part of the waistband shut and you should be able to flip it like this and there you have your waistband. So that's what it looks like on the inside. So now I'm gonna give this a good press and then I'm going to top stitch as close as I can to this seam all the way around the waistband just to really hold everything in place. I've gone ahead and sewn everything down and this is what the skirt looks like now. So now what we need to do is add a buttonhole for the waistband and I think I'm gonna do this tomorrow because I've never actually made a buttonhole before and to be honest with you, I am so nervous about it and like kind of scared. So I'm gonna do that tomorrow. Are you guys ready to make this buttonhole? Because I'm not. I don't know why I'm so nervous, um, but let's just jump right into it and just, just go for it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to measure the existing buttonhole and it's three quarters of an inch and I'm going to draw a line on the waistband that measures three quarters of an inch. And I know these buttonholes are vertical but I'm going to be drawing the one on the waistband horizontally. Okay, so that's what my line looks like. Now we're gonna go ahead and sew the buttonhole. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys the settings that I've changed my machine to to create this buttonhole. I've picked the zigzag stitch number three and I've set my stitch width to 1.5 and the stitch length to 0.3. And what we're essentially going to do is we are going to create a zigzag rectangle around this line that we just drew. I'm starting to the left of the line, sewing a zigzag stitch until I reach the end of the line, turning my fabric 90 degrees, and then continuing to do this until I finished a zigzag rectangle that surrounds that line. So this is definitely the ugliest buttonhole I've ever seen, but considering it was my first time attempting this, I'm, I'm okay with it. Um, but now I'm going to use my seam ripper and I'm going to seam rip that center section open and then we're gonna test it out to see if it works. So not the most aesthetically pleasing buttonhole, but it functions, so I'm gonna take it as a win. Now I'm going to sew on the button for my waistband, and then I'm also going to replace all of these orange buttons with these white buttons that I got at Joann's. I have the skirt on and it fits, so let's move on. Moving on to the top. So I don't really know what I wanna do with this top quite yet, but I know that I don't like the collar, so I'm gonna go ahead and seam rip that off first. So I've removed the collar and now that I have it on, I'm realizing that it is very short. 
So I'm going to add a band all the way around just to give it a little bit of length and then I'll be able to like raise my arms up. So I'm thinking I wanna make it a deep V in the front. I'm gonna work on this side of the top and then I'll just copy the pattern that we come up with onto the other side. So I'm just gonna start with folding it down to create that V shape and then I'm just gonna pin it in place. I'm actually going to pin the top to my sports bra so it doesn't shift. Now the original shoulder seam drops too low for me so I'm gonna put a pin right here to mark where I want the new seam to be. Now I'm gonna figure out the new side seams. Now that I have these basic points marked out, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and then start drafting this pattern. First, I seam rip the piece we were just working on from the rest of the top. Then I draw out my new pattern using the pins as a guide. Now, cut making sure to leave a quarter inch seam allowance. Place this piece on the other side, right sides facing, and make sure that the darts are aligned. Pin these two pieces together and cut. You now should have two mirrored pieces that look like this. For the back, I start by folding my piece in half and pinning it to secure so that I can draft my pattern on fold. Now I'm just drawing a straight line as close to the bottom edge as possible. I measure the total width of my front pieces so that I can figure out how wide I need to make the back piece. The width of the front of my top is 15 inches. Then I measure myself to identify how long I need my band to be. The measurement for me is 28 inches. This means that the width for the back of my top needs to be 13 inches. So I am measuring from this folded center edge and marking it six and a half inches. Because I'll be adding a dart, I'm going to add one inch to this measurement, which brings the total length to seven and a half from the folded edge. Then I use my front piece as a guide to draw the side seams at the seven and a half inch point. Still using my front piece as a guide, I mark the shoulder seam and draft the new armhole. Then I draft a square neckline for the back. Cut out your new pattern, making sure to only leave a quarter inch seam allowance for the side seams. Draft your dart that measures one inch wide and three inches tall and repeat on the other side. Unpin and you should have a symmetrical piece that looks like this. I lay and pinned my back piece to my lining fabric, learning from my previous mistakes and doing this before I sewed the darts. Then I replicate the darts onto my lining piece. Unpin and you should have two pieces that look like this. For the lining for my front pieces, I trace out the shape, making sure to account for the dart since it had already been sewn. Then I fold my fabric in half Pin to secure so that I can cut both my lining pieces out at the same time. Replicate your dart for the other side. Unpin and your pieces should look like this. So I've sewn down the darts in the back of the top and I also attached the front two pieces to the back along the shoulder seam. And I used some safety pins to pin down the side seams because I want to try it on and make sure everything fits nicely. And right now it kind of looks like an ugly vest, but I think it fits me quite nicely around the ribs. This part is gaping a little bit, but I think once I add the sleeves, I think that's gonna fix that problem. So I'm pretty pleased with how it fits now. I'm gonna go ahead and attach the lining fabric at the shoulder seams. My plan for this top is to add these tiny buttons, so I'll need to add some elastic buttonhole closures. I make a small loop with this elastic string and I'm going to sew it to the right side of my top. Then I'll do three more. As you can see here, I've sewn on four of my elastic buttonhole loops. Now, I'm taking my top and lining and pinning them together, right sides facing, making sure that they line up at the shoulder seam. Sew along where you just pinned. Now that I've sewn those two pieces together, I'm going to make two notches in the back, right here and right here, so that when I flip the garment over, it's gonna lay nice and flat. As you can see here, I just made a notch as close to the seam as possible. And also, look how cute this little buttonhole closure has turned out. Now I'm just gonna flip the garment over to the right side and just press down those seams so that everything is nice and neat. I've pinned my side seams together. I'm going to sew those down and then I'm going to repeat that with the lining fabric. 
Let's move on to the band that goes on the bottom of the top. So I'm actually going to use the fabric that we saved from the collar and I'm gonna go ahead and seam rip this so that we have some nice flat pieces to work with. Now we're gonna make the band the same way we made the waistband for the skirt with a couple of minor differences. Here are the pieces from the collar laid out. I'm going to work in sections the same way we made the waistband. I start by measuring the bottom of one of the front pieces. That measurement for me is seven and a half inches. Then I draw a rectangle that measures seven and a half by two inches. Now cut, and I'm only leaving seam allowance for the side seams. Repeat for your other front piece. Repeat the same steps for the back of the top, and this time my rectangle measures 13 inches by two inches. You now should have three pieces that look like this. Sew them together at the side seams. I've sewn this together at the side seams and I've folded it in half lengthways and given it a good press. Before I attach this to the top, I'm going to add an elastic loop. As you can see here, I've sewn the little loop thing onto the band. Now I'm gonna take the band and pin it right sides facing to the top. And I'm just gonna work my way all the way around. Now sew. I'm actually going to hem this a little bit differently than we did the waistband. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to fold this edge in so that it looks like that. And I'm gonna pin that to secure. So now I'm just going to be folding this raw edge in and then pinning it down to the top and I'm gonna work my way until I reach the other end. With everything pinned down, you should have something that looks like this from the outside and this is what it looks like on the inside. Now I'm just going to sew as close as I can to this seam to hold everything in place. Here's what the top looks like now. Everything is super clean and neat and I'm just going to hand sew these buttons on now. Okay, so I just sewed the buttons on, the top is on. It's actually fitting me pretty nicely. So now all we have left to do is add the sleeves. And sure, I could just add the original sleeve, but I think I want a puffy sleeve. So I am going to have to seam rip the sleeve open. Why do I do this to myself? And then add another piece of fabric to make it larger so that I can ruffle it and then I'll reattach them to the top. So I just finished seam ripping, but I don't really want to get up because she's just so comfy. Back to the sleeves. The first thing I do is straighten out these two curved edges. I'm just using my ruler to draw a straight line and then trimming away the excess fabric on both sides. Then I cut out this little piece of fabric from the facing of the top and I'm going to sew them all together to create a bigger sleeve. As you can see here, I've attached one of the puff sleeves onto the top and I didn't film this part yet because I just wanted to see what it would look like before I started filming the steps. And I kind of really don't like it. Like, it doesn't look awful. It's just not my style. And I think I would just prefer a slimmer sleeve. <sighs> so I'm going to seam rip this and I'm gonna take out that panel that we added and then I'm just going to put the original sleeves back on. Tiny piece of fabric, thank you so much for your time. Unfortunately, you will not be receiving a call back today. So I sewed the sleeve together here already because it's a little bit easier for me, I find, to install the sleeve when I've already sewn this part down. I've lined up that seam on the sleeve along with the side seam of my top and I've pinned to secure. Now I'm just going to pin all the way around before I sew. Now that I have it all pinned, I'm gonna go ahead and sew. Now that your sleeve is on, all that's left to do is hem and all I'm going to do is fold over twice and sew. Now repeat for the other sleeve. Here is my completed top and now that we're done with my outfit, I actually have a couple of scrap pieces of fabric left. So I'm gonna try to make a dress for Daisy as well. It might be a little patchworky because I don't really have much left, but I'm just gonna go for it. Using a pattern that I previously made for Daisy, I cut out all the pieces that I need. This is actually the second time I'm upcycling a matching dress for her as well. I made her a birthday dress a couple months ago and I'm going to link that video down below if you guys would like to check that out. Now that I have Daisy's and my outfits completed, let's move on to part two of this tutorial. So I've never actually tried eco dyeing before, but I really wanted to try dyeing with avocados because it produces this really nice blush pink. 
So I did a little bit of research and most of the blog posts that I read wrote that you need a mordant. And what that is, is it basically helps bind the natural color to whatever fabric you're trying to dye. Based on my research, one of the more common mordants is aluminum powder, but I didn't want to purchase that, so I'll be using soy milk. And technically, it's not a mordant, but it still works as a binder, so this is what I'm going to be using. Using soy milk as my binder is going to be a really lengthy process, but I really want the avocado dye to be lasting on my garment because extracting the color from the avocado is also a really tedious process. So I wanna make sure that I'm setting myself up for success and let's get started. Here I have my bucket of water and I'm just pouring the soy milk into it. Then I take my garments and completely saturate it in the mixture. I'm gonna let this soak for about 10 to 12 hours. About 10 hours later, I wring out all my garments and let them air dry overnight. I ended up repeating this process three more times and I let my garments completely dry for over 24 hours before dyeing them. Moving on to the final part of the video. I'm gonna be using a pot that I no longer use for cooking and I have put in my avocado skins and pits. And as you can see here, they are frozen because I have been collecting them for about a month. Now I'm just going to pour some water in and I'm gonna be cooking this on a pretty low heat because you wanna really slowly extract the color out. I'm gonna leave this to simmer for a couple of hours and then I'm gonna come back and check on it. I'm currently cooking my third batch of dye. Um, I have the first two batches that I made in this bowl. So I made the first two batches with the skins and the pits and for this batch, I'm just trying it out with just the pits. The reason I did that was because I wanted to see if there was a difference in the color, but the difference isn't super significant to me. Based on what I saw online, normally you would just remove the avocado bits from the dye bath, you would just pop your garment directly into it, let it simmer for about an hour, and then let it soak off heat. Unfortunately for me, this pot is just not quite big enough for all the things I need to put in here, so I will be using my bucket. I'm gonna be using a sieve to strain out the pits. Since I won't be able to simmer my garment in the pot, I'm actually going to heat up my first two batches of dye before adding it to the bucket. Before putting my garments into the dye bath, I wanted to mention that I've completely saturated them with water so that it hopefully dyes evenly. And I also forgot to say that I cooked each dye batch for about two to three hours. I'm gonna let this soak for about 24 hours, but we'll see if I can stay that patient. So my garments have been sitting in the avocado dye for a little over 10 hours now and I got a little impatient so I went to check to see how it was doing and I'm really really glad that I did because my avocado dye is not pink but it's orange. So I'm trying to just go with it and not be too upset that I basically took an orange dress, bleached it, and then dyed it orange again. So I think I'm just going to rinse this out in cold water and then wash and dry it and hope that it's not super orange. As you can see here, I'm just rinsing my garments out until the water runs clear and then I'm going to wash and dry it and cross my fingers that this turns out okay. tell to my surprise when I pulled my outfit out of the dryer it was pink I love the color that it ended up being but it did have this weird stain in the back I don't really know what happened but I love this outfit so much that I'm gonna try to fix it so if you guys know why this happened or how I can fix this please let me know in the comments below if you guys enjoyed this tutorial please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and as always thank you so much for watching